So we're going to look at some of the abiotic issues that impact plants. Uh, some listed here are like extremes in temperature, such as cold or heat. Other stresses can be drought, salinity, heavy metals, and a couple others that I'm going to discuss here. Uh, and these are abiotic issues impacting plants. Now, these aren't to be confused with biotic or living issues. So all abiotic is non-living. Many of these come down to grower error, but being able to classify plant issues in this category can help with developing a plan of correction uh, and ultimately prevention going forward. Uh, these are important things. If you can classify them, this can help you going forward uh, and avoid making mistakes in the future. Also, there are nutrient deficiencies. So underfertilizing plants can cause unwanted stress to the plants, which can stunt their overall growth. Individual nutrients have characteristic looks that can aid in identification of what nutrient the plant is deficient in. So just because the leaves are yellowing or the leaves are a certain color, um, it depends where they might be located, but that can help with the identification of that nutrient. So you as a grower will know what to properly feed the plants as far as food goes to avoid that deficiency in the future. In the opposite of that, there's also nutrient toxicities. Often growers uh, will think more is better, and this is not the case. The goal is to hit the optimum range of what the plant needs. Watch the exact fertilizer blend or ratios that you're using because it's possible for a nutrient to be overadded if a grower only focuses on one nutrient of interest. For example, fertilizing for nitrogen and overadding phosphorus. Let's read an example here. We're using this fertilizer for nitrogen. We're focused on the nitrogen number. Remember, it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. If we're fertilizing for nitrogen, we could be overadding the phosphorus. Uh, so be mindful of that. Don't just get locked into the one nutrient you're concerned about. Look at the blend in the entire amount of fertilizer and all the nutrients that it contains that your plant will be exposed to. You want to have kind of all your ducks in a row and keep everything nice and consistent. You want to be getting one way out of whack. Also sun, uh, sunburn or light burn. So sunburn often happens when plants are moved from an indoor to an outdoor operation. Uh, or also light burn. This can result when light types are changed or it can also occur if the plant is allowed to grow too close to the lights. Uh, that can cause a burning to the plants, really damage the leaves, and uh, permanently stunt some of those apical meristems or those growing tips of the plant. Herbicide or spray damage in general. If outdoors and spraying an herbicide to control weeds in the area, be mindful of the potential for drift. Small droplet size and wind will increase the odds of this. We can kind of see that occurring here while the, this uh, particular person is spraying just to here. We can see the drift or the carryover the wind is definitely blowing in this direction because you don't see a lot of spray or drift going this way. For indoor operations, uh, often growers will mix products too strong or mix some that are incompatible. Or they can even make applications during full light intensity of the canopy, which can also cause damage that could easily be avoided. And this damage is a physical damage. This is why it's classified as abiotic. Ozone or air pollution is not a typically a major problem, but one that should be taken into consideration if there's an area of damage that either is sudden widespread with other abiotic category descriptions not fitting what the grower is seeing. Typically kind of get this white or this bleached look to the light of the leaves. This can be indicating the potential of air pollution, air contaminant, or ozone damage. This can occur in indoor or more commonly in outdoor operations in general. If you are using an ozone kind of method of odor control, be mindful it's not functioning properly. Uh, if there's a malfunction, if there's something that's not going right, that could potentially um, cause some ozone damage to the plants.